Hey everyone, I'm Mike Sattel, founder of Sattel Tutoring, and today is the March SAT score release day, or at least for people who took the SAT on the weekend of March 9th. If you took the test in school, then I think you've gotta wait a little longer until maybe April 4th, of, but bookmark this video so you can come back and tell me all about it once those scores come back. So the main point of this video is, is twofold. Basically, you are gonna answer some questions for me. I wanna know how you did, I wanna know if you're surprised by that, I wanna know what you think of the curve in math, we did talk about that hard math section in another video, so we're gonna talk about that again. But also, I hope to answer some questions for you. So don't just immediately comment, I did terribly, okay? Just, th I'm gonna put it in perspective. I'm gonna try to tell you what constitutes a good score, and even if you are gonna take it again, what you should be doing next. What can you do in the meantime so that you're make sure, you make sure that you're ready for the next SAT and that the scores continue to go up? So let's first talk about uh, kind of where we left off once the March SAT happened. A lot of people were commenting that the math section was extremely hard, much harder than any of the practice tests. So I made a video about that. That's the thumbnail for it. And I had three basic theories for what could have happened. Uh, the only theory I'm really interested in discussing now is theory number one, which was that yes, the math was harder than the practice tests, but that the curve will be more lenient to account for that. So I'm mostly just curious, what do you think? Did this end up being true? Did you end up doing better or worse than you thought you would when you left that SAT. So you probably left the SAT, maybe we went on Reddit afterwards and started thinking about all sorts of questions and seeing what everyone else thought, and you were like, oh my God, I got five, six, seven questions wrong, or I had to guess on four or five questions, that's way more than usual. So in your mind, you're like, oh, that's already knocking my score down 50, 60 points. Did it end up happening that way? Or did you end up kind of allow, getting maybe some questions wrong, but maybe this, the curve allowed you to get those questions wrong without completely destroying your score? This is gonna be hard to uh, guess at though. We don't know how many questions you got wrong, I don't think. I don't think the SAT is gonna be releasing that information. So you may end up getting more questions wrong than you thought. So maybe, yes, the questions that you had to guess on, you got wrong. Uh, and that's gonna hurt your score. But maybe those aren't the only questions that you got wrong, and there were other ones that you thought you were gonna get right that you ended up getting wrong, but you made careless mistakes, you fell for a trap, and those were questions that you were otherwise confident in. So it's very hard to know if your score is worse than you expected, exactly why that is. We will talk about maybe some analysis we can do in a second, but this is something that's gonna be very difficult. So I'm hoping to just kind of crowdsource this information, see what people think, maybe you kind of somehow know how many you got wrong, and you can kind of comment on the curve in that way. But if you have any thoughts about the curve, uh, specifically for math, because that's what you were talking about, but also if you have any thoughts about the reading curve, let me know. I am very curious how the actual scores compare to what your perception of the scores was when you finished the test. Um, but before, again, before you comment that you did terribly, let's put it in perspective as to what even is a good score, okay? So the percentiles show us that maybe scores that you consider bad because of all the stuff you see on YouTube and Reddit and whatnot, or maybe what your friend's scores are, they're not so bad, right? So a 1500 out of 1600 is the 98th percentile. That's an amazing score. And the 1400s, that's a 93rd percentile. You did better than 93% of people who take the test. That's incredible. Those are scores you're gonna wanna send to pretty much every college, including the best colleges in the world. 1300s and 1200s are also still very good scores. Maybe they're not quite as good as you would need for some of the top colleges, but but they're still up there and there's still room for improvement. So those are all places where I'd say, you 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 know, just put things in perspective. Maybe it's not what you wanted, maybe it's not what you expected, but it still is a very good score to be proud of. And most importantly, what is a good score is really about what is a good score for you. So you have to put it in perspective with your own performance. So compare your SAT score to your PSAT score and to your practice test, specifically that first practice test that you took if you did not take a PSAT. If you went up 100 points, that's good. If you went up 200 points, that's great. Now again, maybe you want more and maybe you can get more points. It's possible, but these would be two jumps in score that I would be proud of and that would you would consider a success for this test. So we have to think about how we compared the PSAT when we probably didn't study at all. And also thinking about the practice test, think about the first practice test that you took and the last one you took right before the exam. So if your actual SAT score is very close to your last practice test, 
that's expected. That means that the practice tests were pretty good representation of what it would be. And that means that when you take the next few practice tests, we really want those scores to be as high as possible. So we can then also see really good scores on the real exam. And that gets to what is next, what you should be doing if you are going to take the test again. Well, the next three times the test is offered are May, June, and August. So depending on your APs and finals and all that stuff, your summer plans, uh, you need to th figure out which one you're going to do. Um, I think that the May and June, you might be getting a little close, but if you are just ready to go right back in, go for it. And if you're not overwhelmed with APs and finals, those are okay. But for many of you, the August SAT is totally fine because you can just wait until school is over. And then in the summer, use that time when you don't have homework and assignments to actually do very, very thorough prep. Now we do get, have two new practice tests. They were just released. Okay. But don't just dive right into them. Okay. Even if you wasted all the other ones or used all the other ones, I should say, don't just dive right into these and start wasting these. Okay. We have to save them because I very much doubt we're going to get another two practice tests before the end of 2024. So we need to use them at very important times in our prep. And right after you get your SAT scores is not an important time. You need to learn from your mistakes first. Okay. So let's start doing some analysis and learning from those mistakes, building skills before we go and use a practice test to test out those skills. So what can we do? Well, in the score report, you should have this knowledge and skills section, these little like boxes, some um, black, some white that tell you how you did in certain areas. This is not particularly helpful, but I do have videos that kind of walk you through each and every single category and kind of tell you what they include. You can feel free to make some comments about them in this uh, video here, and I'll try to respond, but I'm going to put the links to those two videos. Uh, about interpreting those knowledges and skills sections uh, in the description. So check those out first. But also we need to then get into the nitty gritty analysis that we can get from your previous practice test. And I think this is an area where a lot of people have some room for improvement. We think of going through a practice test result as just what, what questions did I get wrong? Let me look at the right answer. But it's way more in depth than that. You need to start to look for those patterns in what you get wrong. Why are you getting them wrong? Are they careless mistakes because you're making an arithmetic error or misreading a sentence? Or are they traps where it's a hard question and you kind of fell for that answer that felt right without really taking the time to prove it. Or is it something that you don't know? Is there a formula, a vocab word, a grammar rule, something that can be memorized that you don't know? And so this is where I can help. My channel has lots of things that can already can start to target those individual pieces. Sometimes it's more of a strategy issue. Sometimes it's more of a knowledge issue. Sometimes you just get nervous and we can work on all of those things to try to improve your skills. But it's really important to start pinpointing what is your specific issue before you start diving into those practice tests. You want to learn from those mistakes and improve on them before we start going into the big picture of the test again. So this is what is next for you. And that kind of then lets me get to uh, talk about what's next for me, my channel, I'm going to continue to make new resources. So first things first, I have already completed pacing videos for uh, SAT practice tests five and six. So those are now released in the Blue Book app. So when it does finally get time to take them, you should take them yourself first. And then when you are done, I have these videos that you can use to see how I took them. I did not look at the questions beforehand. I took them just like you would with no you know, complete blindness. And uh, I had some trouble pacing myself. So it is hard. And so we need to learn these lessons that if I am struggling with the pacing, it is very natural for you to struggle with the pacing as well. So this might just be something that is part of the new reality of the digital SAT that we need to make sure we are on top of. So uh, those are all ready to go. I will also be very soon working on the individual videos that really get into the detail to solve every single question. I have these already for tests one, two, three, and four, and both of the PSATs from the Blue Book app. So this takes some time, but I will work on it as soon as possible and start releasing those so that as you go over your test results, you can also just like figure out what is the best strategy for these questions? How could I have solved these more efficiently? And how can I learn from my mistakes? stake. So just stay tuned, subscribe. Those will be uh, posted shortly. In the meantime, I've also been working on uh, these little uh, short exercises of 10 questions at a time for uh, the questions from the College Board Question Bank. And I purposely filtered out the questions that would be on the Blue Book practice test. So we're not spoiling those. And I've organized these into just little chunks. So you can practice really targeted skills like grammar, like transitions, like those logically complete questions. I've got those. And I'm going to be working on those those and releasing them uh, pretty much every week. I'll, get, I'll be releasing a few of those. So just make sure that you stay tuned for that so you can start to target those specific areas. And the thing I'm most excited about is I'm going to be releasing my own question bank through YouTube. Basically, it's going to be new questions, original questions that I've written, that I've created to target very specific skills from the SAT. My goal 
hopefully I can meet it, is to have a thousand questions in that question bank by the August SAT. So it's not quite ready yet, but I'm planning to release about 150 or 200 questions in the next week or so. So please make sure that you subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss these great opportunities to have spoiler-free SAT prep lessons. Basically, that's the key. As I said many, many times, those practice tests are the best resource you have, but we need to be able to save them for the right times in our prep. And in the meantime, what else can you do? Well, you can target specific areas, you can learn new strategies, you can memorize formulas, grammar rules, vocabulary, and all of that you can get on my channel. So make sure you subscribe so you know all of my new lessons. And again, just let me know how you did on this March SAT. If you want to brag about your scores, go for it. That's awesome. You deserve it. If you had a little more trouble, then, uh, you know, don't, don't get mad, but let's see if we can learn from those mistakes. Uh, I really am curious how the test went for everybody, especially the curb, uh, the curve on the math section, and I'm happy to provide whatever guidance I can to help you study. So if you have specific questions, ask them in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. Once again, I'm Mike Sattel, and remember, when it comes to your scores, don't settle for less, Sattel for more.